All right, so here's a quick e-tutorial on schema theory, which is quite a common part of the OCR AS physical education spec. So we need to make sure we get our heads around it. So one of the first things we need to do is make sure that we understand what schema theory is. Um, this concept of schema is really important, otherwise we won't be able to answer the question. So the first thing we'll look at then is, what exactly is schema? Now the way in which to answer the question, what is schema, is to refer to motor programs. You really must be talking about a motor program in order to answer the question of what schema is. Now, if you remember, hopefully, from your studies prior to this, that a motor program essentially is a pattern uh, held in the brain which tells the brain or the body how to carry out a particular movement. So, for example, we'd have a motor program for kicking, we'd have a motor program for throwing, we'd have a slightly more sophisticated motor program for the tennis serve. So these are patterns uh, which are stored in the brain. Now, the schema is this concept where we change, we modify, we adapt, we are update the, the motor program. So we're not using the same motor program for every single situation we find ourselves in. We're constantly changing it, modifying it, updating it, depending upon the situation we, is, we are in. Sorry. Now, if we find that we get a question, what is schema, you need to be saying these key words in front of you. You need to be saying that it's the changing, the modifying, the adapting of the motor program for a particular movement skill. Okay, so now we come on to schema theory itself, and you will see in front of you there that we talk about two types of schema. One is recall schema and one is recognition schema. We'll look at each of those individually in a moment, but the way for you to remember this, any question to do with schema, you want to be including both recall and recognition schema. So just try to remember it as the two R's, R, R, schema. This is hypothetical but someone let's imagine this guy's name is schema and his initials are R R so whenever you see a question about schema just ask about schema you know that you've got to talk about R for recall and R for recognition just by doing that perhaps not even writing any more than recall and recognition you may well score a mark so make sure you put both recall and recognition schema into your answer somewhere Now the second part of the schema is the recognition schema. Now this 
can be broken down into two parts. You can see one is sensory consequences and one is response outcome. Now, the sensory response uh, consequences refers to the feeling of the movement, and there's a little bit of debate as to whether that's actually when the movement is taking place or when it's finished. The point is, and it's really important you put this across on paper, is how the movement feels. Um, we tend to talk about what it feels like, so my, in the situation with the basketball, um, I know that I'm a certain distance away from the basket and therefore I've got to make sure that my shot is carried out with a certain strength, um, which means that I've got to contract my muscles in a particular uh, degree and sense strength so that the movement is carried out successfully. Equally, if I'm off balance, I will feel that and that will probably lead to the, uh, the shot being unsuccessful. So sensory consequences refers to the feeling of the movement. Those are the key points that you must get down on paper. Um, and you might want to be using the word kinesthesis, which refers, which really re means the feeling of the movement. Now, the response outcome clearly, clearly refers to what happened. Uh, and as you can see there, it says, how successful was the desired response? That really means, what was the outcome? I wanted to shoot, I wanted to score. If my shot was correct and I carried out the movement as I would had wanted to with the correct um, contraction of the muscles and the correct strength and the correct height of the ball and the trajectory etc it should have been successful however things may not have gone according to plan and I've seen the ball go wide or hit the uh, rim or hit the backboard and bounce back those will all give me information about the outcome of the movement now schema theory says that I will store that information and I will use that the next time I carry out the movement so that I can make sure that I don't throw it so hard or I don't throw it too lightly so it doesn't reach the board. That is all response outcome. What actually happened? What was the, uh, the outcome of the movement? So this final slide then uh, gives you an overview of what schema theory is about. And everything on the slide that you can see you should be putting down on paper if you get a question about schema theory. Obviously it depends exactly what the wording is, but these are the sorts of things that's going to be on a mark scheme. First of all, you want to be putting across, okay, what does schema theory mean? What is schema? It's modifying, it's changing, it's updating a motor program. One well, mark, fantastic. Write down, it's divided into two areas, recall schema and recognition schema. You'll get a mark for that. You won't get one mark for just recall and one mark for recognition schema, but if you write both down, recall and recognition schema, you'll probably score a mark. You need to be using these key concepts. You need to be saying initial conditions and explain what they are. Give a sporting example. You need to be talking about response specifications. Say what that means. Give an example. You need to be saying sensory consequences. This is what this means. Here's an example. And similarly with response outcome, the same. Now make sure that you use one sporting example for each of those four areas. As, I, as I've used, it's the basketball, he's about to shoot, what are the initial conditions, what do I need to do, response specifications, what should it feel like, what was the outcome. So your example is going to be the same example all the way through. So there you go, that is schema theory in a nutshell. What you need to be able to do is you need to be able to give your own practical example of how schema theory works, how recall schema works, how recognition schema works, and that you can successfully put that down on paper so that you've got these key concepts involved. A really good tip for you in preparation for your exam is to create one, make sure you've got all those key points, create an example, make sure you've got those key points and learn it because the chances are when you get a question it's going to ask very generally how does a schema theory help uh, the learning of movement or describe schema theory using practical examples that is an actual past paper question. So if you get these key concepts down, you should be absolutely fine. I hope this is helpful. Make sure you go back and review it. You can look at each slide individually and let's hope you have some success in your exam if this type of question comes up.